Welcome everyone to 5 Things You Didn't Know About TechSoup's Donation Programs. Thanks so much for joining us today for TechSoup's webinar. Before we get started, I want to make sure everyone is comfortable using ReadyTalk, the platform you are joining us on today. You can chat in at any time to let us know if you have any technical issues, need help, or if you have questions for our presenters using the box on the lower left side of your screen. You don't need to bother with raising your hand. You can just chat in when you feel moved to do so. Or if you feel like sharing any expertise or experience you may have with any of the information we are sharing, and we will share that back out with you, our participants. Like I said, you can chat in to ask any questions. We will keep all lines muted today so we get a clear recording for you to refer to at a later time. If you are hearing um, any echo play through your computer speakers, you may be logged in more than once and will need to close any additional instances of ReadyTalk. You may also find that the slides and audio may not stay in sync. And if that's the case, we recommend dialing in using the phone number that's toll free that Susan chatted out into the chat number or into the chat window for you already. We are recording today's webinar and you will be able to find it on TechSoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. That's also where you can find a list of our upcoming webinars. Uh, and you can also view them on our YouTube channel at TechSoup Video. Within a few days you will receive this full recording and the slides that we will be presenting today as well as any additional links that we want to share. You can tweet us at TechSoup or using the hashtag TSWebinars. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'll be your host for today's event and presenting. Uh, and I am the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup. I've been with the organization now for eight and a half years, and prior to that spent a decade working with uh, small nonprofits in Washington, D.C. and in Oakland, California, and was frequently the accidental techie um, and also a user of TechSoup services at all three of those organizations before joining the staff. Um, we are also joined today by Catherine Svobodny who is a Program Manager at TechSoup managing the TechSoup Boost subscription program that we'll hear about a little bit later. In addition to Boost, she works to connect nonprofits with training and services to make sure they are getting the most out of their tech donations. She has experience working with a number of different nonprofits in the San Francisco Bay Area and beyond. She's now in I believe Seattle area, Washington, focusing on poverty and homelessness issues, economic development, and small business development. We'll also hear from Cameron Jones who is the Vice President of Technology Solutions and Services here at TechSoup where she is responsible for the development of innovative solutions and services to better support the global nonprofit sector. And I'll talk a little bit about uh, TechSoup's reach in just a moment. This work includes managing global implementations of programs and initiatives with new business models such as TechSoup Boost that we just mentioned uh, to bring more benefits to nonprofits and IT service and support to help nonprofits better adopt the technologies that they need to fulfill their missions. You'll see on the back end Susan Hope Bard, TechSoup's Training and Education Manager. She'll be on hand to help you with any issues and to flag your questions for our presenters as we go through the content. Our objectives for today, we hope that you'll come away from today's webinar with a better understanding of the TechSoup donation programs and resources that are available to you. In particular, we'll be highlighting 5 things you didn't know about our programs today, and we hope you'll get even more than that out of it. We hope that you'll come away having learned at least 3 different technology programs uh, that are available to your organization and that you'll have expanding your comfort, that you'll be more comfortable with accessing them through the TechSoup website. And we hope mostly that we'll be able to answer your questions. So if you have questions about anything that TechSoup does, feel free to chat out to us and we'll do our best to answer them today. I'm going to just do a quick overview of TechSoup for those of you who may not be very familiar with us yet. But uh, we mentioned that Cameron's role is helping with our global uh, technology uh, sharing and spreading. And every place that's blue on this map is where we are in the world, which is just about everywhere. Uh, we would love it if you would chat in to let us know from where you're joining today. And go ahead and just let us know. We're in the uh, San Francisco Headquarters Office here at TechSoup. But um, we are working all over the world now to help build a dynamic bridge to enable civil society organizations and change agents around the world to access those resources that they need to make a more equitable planet. So thank you uh, for joining us from wherever you are joining in the world today. 
If you are joining us from outside the United States, we recommend you visiting TechSoup.Global and selecting your country from the drop-down. The, the crux of today's content will primarily focus on the TechSoup.org website which is focused on the U.S.-based audience. So if you are joining us from outside the U.S., some of these programs may differ. Some of them may not be available in your area. It really just depends on from where you are joining and what, what uh, options are available to you in your local country or region. We have delivered uh, technology products and donations and grants to NGOs to the tune of more than $5.4 billion with a B. And so I am, like I said, not only proud to be a staff person, but also proud to have benefited from those programs myself as a small nonprofit. So I'm going to get started with the content at hand today. Um, you know, one thing that I wanted to highlight in particular is something that is the, uh, what I consider a missed opportunity very often. Many of you are probably familiar with our donation programs, or at least some of them. Uh, but most organizations go through the course of the year and don't maximize those donations. And by that I mean, I mean uh, go through the year without realizing that they have only accessed one donation program, or maybe two. And maybe they've only gotten one actual product and not 400 products <laughs> that may be available to them. Um, and so I wanted to just talk briefly about one, the types of organizations who can get technology donations. In case you're new to us, it's, it's nonprofits and public libraries with 501 status. It is public libraries within the IMLS database. So if you're listed in the IMLS, if you operate a Friends of the Library program or a Library Foundation group, uh, if you are a foundation, whether a big foundation, a community foundation, a family foundation, or whether you are a church or a house of worship, synagogue, mosque, with or without 501 status, we can often verify your status uh, if you are part of a, a branch of churches uh, or a diocese or what have you. These organizations are generally eligible, well, we should say qualified to access donations through Tech TechSoup. Now, all of our donation programs have different requirements and eligibility restrictions. Um, so you may qualify for some tech, you may qualify to be a member of TechSoup depending on your org type. You may be eligible to only receive certain donations depending on what kind of work you do. So if your mission is a soup kitchen versus uh, an animal shelter versus a save the, uh, the watershed organization or a community foundation or a historical society or an arts organization or a church, all of those may have different, different eligibility and different uh, donations that they are able to receive through TechSoup's programs. But the reason I wanted to highlight this is that so many organizations are eligible for so many things that they don't realize that they actually can receive. And so I wanted to quickly highlight a couple of things. Uh, many folks are aware that we have a fiscal year end, which for us is June 30th every year. And some of our donation programs reset. So that means that between July 1st and June 30th you can request a certain number of donations from that donor partner. So it's very tiny print, but you can see Adobe, Amazon Web Services, Autodesk, uh, Bitdefender, Blackbaud, lots of these programs in here reset. So these are ones that are affected by the fiscal year, meaning that they reset every year. You can get a certain number of donations within that time frame. That said, all of these other programs on this side, which includes things like Box, CauseVox, Fundraising, Citrix, um, Dell, GrantStation, Microsoft, they are not beholden to the fiscal year, which means you may be able to request donations any time of the year. You might be able to request 10 times a year for some of these, just depending on the different program requirements. Uh, and you may be able to request, like for the example of Microsoft, you can request up to 50 licenses in a given group of products. So you could have 50 licenses of Office, and you could request those three or four or five times over the course of a year. 
uh, you do have a maximum and they do have their requirements around how, how much you get in a given time frame, but theirs is a two-year calendar, not a one-year calendar. And it's not, not set to uh, July 1st to June 30th. So this is where I mentioned that uh, you should really look into the details of these different programs and just be aware of how many programs there are. So if you're looking for uh, help with um, developing your own learning management system because you want to deliver trainings, well, there's a program called Litmos here. If you are looking for a web conferencing program, there's Citrix. You can run um, GoToWebinar, GoToMeeting, GoToTraining. These programs are all available to you whether you realize it or not. So the reason I mention that is because I think it is really important to take a, take a moment and really study up what's on our site because there are tons of things that people don't realize are in here. And most organizations don't request their allotment of what they can get in the course of a year or in the course of a two-year window. Um, some products will say you can only request one item in a given time frame. Some will say you can have up to four, but most of the organizations don't actually do that. So I wanted to highlight that there are so many things available. And I want to go ahead really quickly and share my desktop because I would like to show one thing that I think is pretty great on TechSoup's website. And let me know in the chat window if you're not able to see the site. I'm at TechSoup.org right now. There is this great tool, if you're not aware of it already, under Get Products and Services. If you scroll down to check your eligibility, this is a great tool whether you have already registered with TechSoup or not. If you're already registered, which I assume many of you probably are, and you click on Check Your Eligibility, it recommends that you log in first. And I would agree with that sentiment, to log in first. If you aren't already registered, you can complete the quiz. Without, um, without doing anything else. You can complete the quiz just to see what you may be eligible to request. But once I log in, I have a bunch of different test organizations in here, so I'm going to just select one of those. Uh, so if you request donations on behalf of more than one organization, it will ask you. But without having to even complete the quiz, I can see this organization is eligible to request donations from all of these. So if you're not sure what types of donations you can get through TechSoup, this I think is your number one stop. Come to this Check Eligibility. Again, it's under Get Products. Down here, check your eligibility. If you are already registered, you'll, you just pick your organization if you have more than one listed. If you don't, you'll just have it show up with the one organization that you represent. And you can see, Oh, okay, I'm, I'm eligible for Adobe and Adobe Cloud and Amazon Web Services, and I'm eligible for Boost, and I'm eligible for Bytes of Learning. What's that? You, know, you can see what all of these are, and then just click off to those pages to find all of those different donation programs and learn about them. So I think it's a terrific way to see the wide variety of products that you may not even know are available to you. Like, oh, I can get – Dell stuff? I need new computers? Well, let me check that out. Um, and we'll go over some of these other programs in detail uh, as we highlight some other things we think you may not know as much about. But I wanted to highlight this as the first stop because I do think it's so important to recognize how much is available to you and to really look at what those restrictions are because there's probably a lot more that you can get that you, than you may even realize. And so I'm going to jump back to the slides. And did we have any questions that have come in at this point? I don't think we have. Okay, good. So I'm going to continue. And um, I mentioned the Microsoft donation program a minute ago. I wanted to highlight um, a couple of things within the Microsoft program in particular because it is our biggest donation program. And this software assurance is I think one of the least utilized but most awesome things about the Microsoft donation program that I think is um, really not well understood and yet so, so valuable if you know how to use it. Um, and it has a name that I just wish Microsoft could sexy up their names a little bit <laughs> because software assurance is 
not super exciting sounding, but it actually comes with a whole slew of benefits. So those of you who are familiar with the Microsoft Donation Program, you can find it at TechSoup.org slash Microsoft or just Microsoft Software Nonprofits where we have a special landing page where you can get your donated Office, Windows, Windows Server, Office 365, all kinds of things. One thing that you may not be aware of is that almost all of the products through Microsoft's donation program with TechSoup, with some few exceptions, come with Software Assurance. What is it? Well, Software Assurance is this amazing benefit, and I'll show it on screen in a moment too, where if you get Office Professional Plus, um, and here it doesn't say what year or what version it is. Uh, you just know it's the Professional Plus version. You get a whole bunch of benefits that the retail market pays hundreds of dollars extra to purchase along with their software. So if you're a big company, you might buy Software Assurance. It comes for free with TechSoup's donations. And that allows you to do a number of things that you may want to do, uh, including if Microsoft comes out with a newer version of that product within a two-year time frame that you can upgrade for free, no cost. So you can have the latest, greatest version of that product within that two-year time frame and not have to pay anything. And you don't have to go through TechSoup again to do it. You can just go directly to where you got the software to begin with from Microsoft and just upgrade to the newest one. It's pretty great. It also allows you to downgrade. So if you have say Windows 10 and you need to back up a version to Windows 8 because maybe you have a piece of hardware or software uh, that isn't compatible, you can downgrade. to You can step back a version. It's usually only one version. So depending on what version is out there, um, currently on the public market you can usually back up one version. And when I say back up, I mean you can downgrade one version. Um, so you can also get multi-language packs. So if you serve a community that has um, a lot of people who speak Vietnamese or Chinese or French or Spanish or German, you can access the multi-language packs of these for no additional cost. There's also home use program which allows you to pay I think it's like $10 to be able to extend the license that you have on your office computer the, the computer that your organization owns, it allows you to extend that license to use on a home machine so that you can do the same thing at home that you can do at the office. And this is all provided through Microsoft Philanthropies that they make these different donations including all of these cloud products available. Um, and they are delivered through Microsoft's Volume Licensing Service Center which is where if you receive, uh, if you request donated Microsoft products through TechSoup, you would get an email that says, "Okay, your your donations are ready. Come here. Here's where you get your license keys. Here's where you download your uh, your license or your software." And you can see here from the VLSC, that's the short version of it, that we've got these different screens where you can download, you can access your licenses. Well, there's this tab for software assurance, and once you click into that, you can access all kinds of things. So here I'll mention e-learning courses. They have free courses that come along with many, many of the products that you request. So say you have requested Microsoft Visio or Microsoft Project. Once you have that product through TechSoup and the Volume Licensing Service Center, you can go into this e-learning application section under your Software Assurance and you can see what free trainings they have available so that you can train yourself on that product. And some of them are like 20 hours of videos on like Microsoft Office for example, um, if you want to learn all of the different Office applications. But those trainings are only available for the products you specifically received. So I can't go and get trained on Visio if I don't actually have a license of Visio. Um, but it's a great benefit and it costs you nothing in addition to your general, general request through TechSoup. Like I mentioned the Home Use Program, Office Multi-Language Pack, but all of these things are available. And they change. This is actually an older screenshot, so it shows Windows 7 for example, but that's not actually in there any longer because that goes back too far. But you know, these are the kinds of benefits you can activate. The Home Use Program, the e-learning, you know, and it's, 
it's not super user friendly from my experience to go in and click through, but it is there and you can get to it and it costs you nothing. So keep that in mind. If you um, have requested Microsoft donations, look at when you did. You can go into your order history on the TechSoup site to, to view um, what, what you've requested in the past. And you, there is a Microsoft Donation Center where you can see your Microsoft donations and what the date is that you last requested. That also determines um, you know, the date that you can upgrade if they release a new version. So if you received Microsoft Office on July 3rd, 2016, you have until July 2nd, 2018 to be able to upgrade if they release a new version. So if that makes sense, you can see those details in your order history. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and stop listening to my own voice for a few minutes and invite one of our co-presenters here today to talk to us a little bit about another program that you may not know about that TechSoup offers called TechSoup Boost. So Catherine, I'd love to welcome you to the program. Hi, sure. Thank you so much, uh, Becky. I'm so happy to join today. Um, so I did want to talk about the TechSoup Boost program. This is a, a fairly new program through TechSoup, and you may not have heard about it because it's, um, it's a little bit different than, than what we've offered in the past. Um, so, so Boost is an annual subscription program. So it's a uh, one-time fee that you pay for access for an entire year of TechSoup Boost. And during this year, you have you unlock discounts, um, special offers, and um, really a, a kind of higher level of access with TechSoup that that you may not get um, through the regular product donation program. So, um, really, TechSoup Boost is the the channel to get the best best deals that we can offer through TechSoup. Like I said, it's it's an annual subscription. You can sign up anytime, and then you you have access to Boost special offers for, for the next 12 months. Um, so included in the Boost subscription, you have special discounts on hardware and software pro, uh, products. And we have waived the admin fees on certain products. So this includes some of our mo most popular ones, um, Tableau, Adobe, access to our Dell affiliate program, where we completely waive the admin fees once you have enrolled in Boost. Um, also, when you sign up for, for the program, you have a $25 voucher upon sign up that you can use for any of the products that aren't already discounted by Boost. Um, so, so anything from the product catalog that you've had your eye on, you have $25 to, um, to credit to that. Um, we also offer some special discounts from across the nonprofit sector that, that, you might other, that you won't see through the regular TechSoup product catalog. Right now we have a couple of great discounts on trainings uh, from the Foundation Center, one of our partners that we first started working with um, through Boost. And also you can let us know what you are looking for. So if you have special requests or things that, that you would like to see a discount on or things that you would like to see in the, the TechSoup product catalog that you haven't yet, uh, definitely let us know. And and the Boost team will try our very best to, to find those deals for you. Um, so you can see here on this page is a screenshot of the um, landing page for TechSoup Boost, and you can find out all of what's available there, techsoup.org backslash boost. And we actually just came out with a couple new offers for Boost. Um, so we're always adding more to, to the product mix, and um, you as I mentioned, you have access to these throughout the year. So we just added a couple of new things. We've had the, uh, the Adobe Photoshop and Premiere Elements bundle that we're offering with no admin fees. We also have the Tableau data visualization software with no admin fees. And then we have a couple of discounts on some of our newer products, um, the Question Pro survey tool, uh, DocuSign Standard Edition, and then we also have some really great hardware discounts. So if you're looking to buy some, some tablets or some laptops for your organization, uh, we do offer those at a discount through Boost, and, and the savings can add up pretty quickly, especially with the $25 coupon. Um, so the Boost 
admin fee for the subscription, it depends on the budget size of your organization. It starts at $79 for organizations under 2 million, or sorry, with a uh, budget size under 2 million. And um, any requests, any registered org organizations at TechSoup can uh, request Boost, but once you're a Boost subscriber, the eligibility restrictions for these particular products still apply. So take a look and see um, what, before you sign up what, what's available to you. And um, please let me know if you have any questions. Great. Thank you for that, Catherine. I think it's really uh, something that a lot of organizations uh, can take advantage of, particularly if you are a smaller organization and you want to have access to a lot of different technologies and resources and services. Um, I love that Boost also includes some trainings and some consultations for free. Um, I think that kind of stuff is, is uh, really uh, not something that a lot of particularly smaller organizations can access without a lot of expense. Um, so it's a great thing to look at. And if you don't mind, I will go ahead and show the page on our website so people can see what, what all of the different variety of things are that are included in Boost. Um, just I'll scroll down through it quickly, but I'd like to just make sure everyone can see it. So let me know in the chat if you can't see it. But uh, TechSoup Boost uh, is just TechSoup.org slash Boost as uh, Susan chatted out. But you can see the waived admin fees on a variety of these uh, top products like Tableau, Adobe's Photoshop, Premier, Photoshop and Premiere Elements 13 bundle or Pepe as we call it internally, um, that the Dell affiliate fee is waived, that you can get extra savings on a variety of these products. If you keep on scrolling down, you can access things like mobile hotspots, which having worked in a tiny organization before coming to TechSoup was a huge thing for us because we often had to work out of different spaces. Not we had shared office space that didn't always have very good Internet. So having hotspots was a huge boon for us because we could work from anywhere, um, particularly with remote staff, tablets. Um, you can get to know a little bit more about Boost with this quick little video here. And then down here, these are some of the things I wanted to mention quickly and the reduced fees for training and consultations that you can access trainings and assessments on things like Office 365 or Salesforce for $0 which is huge when you don't know if those are choices uh, that would be good for you. So definitely check that out, $79 plus you get that $25 coupon. Uh, if you are under $2 million budget, that you can get that $25 coupon to apply to any other kind of thing. So it makes it really affordable to access a huge range of free things and additionally discounted resources. Okay, I'm going to jump back to the slides and have Cameron Jones talk to us a little bit about IT Assist, which is another new program that can help nonprofits really uh, learn how, not learn how, but take the burden of managing their IT off of their own backs, which is often very, very burdensome. So thanks Cameron. Tell us about IT Assist. Hi Becky. Thank you very much. Um, so IT Assist is a new program recently launched on TechSoup, and it is a managed IT service offering. And for those of you that are not familiar with that term, managed IT service, this is a common service that lets you outsource the management of your IT to us. We have, um, we have a, a large group of specialists that are spend all day, every day troubleshooting, monitoring, upgrading, um, patching software, hardware, servers uh, for nonprofits around the United States. And we, uh, we will basically offer this service to nonprofits um, to help support their IT. It's sort of like outsourcing your IT to a third party and having an entire IT department at your disposal. Um, let's see if I'm going to move the slides forward. There we go. Did that work? Um, Becky, would you mind moving the slides? Oh, there we go, to the next one. There we are. Um, so this is a, a program that 
TechSoup launched to serve only uh, nonprofits and public libraries where, where available um, or where public libraries are able to take advantage of services like this. I know that's restricted in some places. In order to keep the costs as low as possible, we provide the support services virtually. So um, all of the monitoring and, and, uh, of, this, of both servers and desktops and laptops we do from afar and we provide help desk support. So if somebody forgets their password or needs, um, you know, accidentally downloaded a virus and their computer is blowing up, we have a whole um, hotline or a whole help desk support staff that you can call or email and, and um, request help and any of your staff can do that. Uh, it is uh, unlimited help desk support, so you're not limited to, you know, five hours a month like some services do that. Um, it's offered live within, uh, you know, kind of standard business hours, and then there's a ticketing system for 20 hour, 24 hour support, and any urgent issues get um, get handled immediately. We, the service mostly monitors the security and performance, manages the backups, make sure all of your data is backed up every day. We know this is a really critical problem. Particularly, we saw this in uh, we saw this as a big problem with nonprofits in areas of the country where you experience disasters, um, earthquakes, uh, hurricanes, snowstorms. Um, we've had a lot of nonprofits come to us over the last couple of years having lost all of their data because it was all on a server in the closet. It wasn't being backed up and um, it, was, it was a disaster for those organizations to lose all of that information and try to, try to figure out how to piece it back together. So the system does daily backups of everything um, into the cloud to make sure that you can recover after any kind of an event. In addition, um, one thing that makes the service a little bit more unique than a lot of managed IT service offers out there is we do regular meetings with all of our customers to talk about what your IT needs are, where are your constraints, what's the best strategy for upgrading your hardware. Say you just got a grant and you say, look, everybody needs, everyone's hardware is really old and terrible. Let's upgrade everybody's hardware. That might not be the best option for you, or you might want to upgrade some people with new computers and you might want to go refurbished for other people who don't need the fanciest, um, highest performance computers. Um, so we do have this technology expert and expertise and advisory service that we that is part of this where people can can nonprofits can discuss with us what their needs are and, and we can help them figure out a strategy for meeting those IT needs. Um, the program includes a free boot subscription, which you just heard about from Catherine, and it also includes a hardware update program. And so this is, um, if again, if you decide that you're, it, often we'll find nonprofits, they will, everyone in the office is running a really old version of a software, and they're doing that because their hardware is badly out of date and they can't really upgrade. We have put together a plan for helping nonprofits upgrade their hardware so that they can do it over time in a, in a kind of a thoughtful planned way that's financially sustainable and manageable for them. So that again is part of this whole, um, this whole process. And I see a couple of questions coming in over, uh, over the chat about pricing. So because every nonprofit is different, some, have, some nonprofits have 10 people, some have 100 people, the pricing is variable depending on the number of staff you have, the number of locations you have, uh, the amount of data that you need backed up, and um, the amount of number of applications you need supported. So it's a, um, there are about five different criteria that go into determining pricing. And um, I will get to how, that, how you find out the pricing in a second. Um, there is another question about is IT Sys provided over remote desktops, virtual workstations, or supporting local workstations? If local, how do you deal with hardware virus related failures? So the, the service is, um, provide, is managed uh, remotely. We do have the ability to, um, to uh, come in over a remote desktop to troubleshoot computers when they need help. We also do have the ability to send in a staff person, you know, if there's if we really do need somebody to come in on site and actually look at the look at the situation in your office, we can certainly do that. That's um, something that's easy to to send somebody in. 
Um, so again, the sort of the, the value that TechSoup TechSoup launched this because we heard so many nonprofits complain about how their IT was unmanageable, but it was too expensive to hire IT staff. So we really are trying to fill a need for uh, nonprofits that need high quality technology advice and management, and we're trying to do it at the lowest possible cost, which is why we do most of our work remotely. It, you know, it costs money to send somebody into an office to have a conversation with somebody. It's, and so, um, so again, the, the focus is really on trying to keep the cost low. TechSoup is a nonprofit. We only serve nonprofits. This is, this is our focus. We really understand some of the pain points that you have around funding, around grants, around um, managing capital expenditures versus operational expenditures. And so that's, you know, we're trying to bring the, the best value and the highest quality service um, for the money that we can. So uh, the way you find out more about IT Assist is that you go to our uh, website at TechSoup.org slash IT dash assist. And we have a, uh, a form that you fill in that you can provide some basic information and then somebody from our staff will give you a call um, and we'll talk through your specific needs. Um, you know, and every nonprofit is really different. Some have servers, some don't. Um, some have a lot of Macs, some have Macs and PCs, some have no Macs. So it's um, so we'll put together kind of a custom quote for your organization to, to to help you, um, to give you a, a sense of what the cost would be for your organization to, to manage this. Um, so go to TechSoup.org slash IT dash assist and uh, fill out the form and we will um, be in touch with you within a couple of days to set up a time to talk. Um, oh, one other thing I wanted to say about IT assist is it's it becomes most cost effective for organizations that are um, kind of 8 to 10 employees or staff members and, and greater. Um, from, a, from a cost management, cost effectiveness um, perspective, it's often uh, cheaper for really small nonprofits that have a staff of two or three people to find somebody local. Uh, you know, I, I'm just going to be totally honest. I don't, I'm not trying to sell something to an organization that doesn't need it. Um, likewise, for nonprofits that are larger that do have IT staff, um, IT assist can be supplemental to that existing IT staff. We can take on the help desk support, helping those people reset passwords, get rid of viruses. Um, we can take over the monitoring and managing of your systems so that your IT staff can think more strategically about what, um, what you need to do from an application um, implementation standpoint from your, IT, your overall IT strategy. So you know we can handle we can handle both we can be supplemental or we can we can take on the whole the whole management ourselves. Um, so again, visit IT Assist, um, submit some contact information, and we'd be more than happy to talk to you about how we can help you out. Thank you for that, Cameron. And you know I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop again just to show what the uh, question. Uh, the form looks like on IT Assist. Uh, you can quickly fill this out if you're interested. And you know, this came about because we got so many requests from organizations over many, many years uh, for actual tech support, <laughs> for real help. Um, so this is what the form looks like. Asks a handful of questions. You know, how do you do your IT now? What kind of support are you looking for? Is there anything specific you want to share with us about your current technology or your organization. So it's a pretty simple form. Maybe take 5 minutes to fill out and then folks would call you to, to get an idea if it really is a good fit for you. Um, but yeah, we, we have gotten so many requests for uh, 2 decades <laughs> to really provide more day-to-day -day support around technology. And that's where this uh, came from. So oops, I'm sorry. I'm needing to go back to my slides, and instead you're seeing an email. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so we hope that you'll check that out if it's something that may be a good fit for you. If you're not sure, you can fill out that form and get contacted, have that conversation, and really determine if it makes the most sense. 
If you're looking for local tech support and you determine that IT Assist may not be a good fit um, or that you just want to go a different way, you know, there are great affinity-based groups like uh, N10 has 501 Tech Clubs, and I'm happy to share some of these resources in different cities around the country. Um, former NPowers that were I think 12 or 13 of them around the country. Many of them have different names now, um, but those types of organizations can also help with local assistance for nonprofits. Many times your state nonprofit association also uh, has resources they can refer you to around helping support your technology. If you decide you need something uh, you know, in your town, in your city, um, but you know, we wanted to have this option available to you, and so we created it, um, and hope that you'll check it out if it seems like it might work for your needs. With that in mind, one of the big parts of our mission at TechSoup is helping to provide resources for you to connect with local experts, for you to connect with the educational resources, so you can best learn how to use those technologies or optimize the technologies that are already in your hands to help you best achieve your mission. And so I wanted to highlight some of the, some of the education and expertise that we have available to nonprofits and libraries as part of our programs. And some of them you may know about. You're here on a webinar, and so you know about our webinars at least to this degree. But we do offer webinars. Um, usually each week we have one, sometimes two, sometimes three webinars a week depending on the topic. And they are primarily geared toward nonprofits. Sometimes they are geared toward a specific audience like we may do a, a webinar specifically for religious organizations. Or we may have webinars specifically geared toward libraries from our TechSoupForLibraries.org program. Those happen usually once a month, uh, the library ones. But we do them on a wide range of topics, and our webinars are free. So you are always welcome to join any of those. And you can see that full calendar of what's coming up at our events and webinars page. But we also make I think a couple hundred of those webinars that are still uh, moderately up to date are, are available for free anytime to watch on our website. You can watch them there. You can download slides. You can click through. You can share the slides. You can present them in your own community because we license our webinars Creative Commons, meaning that you can take what we have created, and usually you can share that back out with your own audience. So feel free uh, to share with your friends and colleagues any of those webinars that you see on our site. We also have created a new uh, learning management system platform that uh, – well, we haven't created the platform, but we are using a new learning management uh, system to bring you a catalog of courses that you can take 24-7, 365 days a year at your own time. So rather than coming to a webinar at a specific time uh, on a specific day, these courses are available to you to access when you need them and however, uh, how, how much time you want to spend how little time you have to spend. Uh, and we are making them available. Every few weeks we are trying to put new courses up. Um, we did just launch this in August, late August. So it is very new to TechSoup. But I would like to go ahead and show you uh, really quickly. Let me get to the right page here, and then I will show you what it looks like. Because this is a, a labor of love for both Susan and I that we have tried to create uh, this full platform for you to access courses. Um, I'm going to share my desktop. And Beverly is asking in the chat, are they free? And um, most of the courses are free. I will say that because we have just launched our first set of courses where there is a fee. Um, and so we are offering the, the 100 levels essentially as free courses. And all of our topics will have a free course or a free uh, level of courses. And then as they get more advanced or more in-depth where we have to bring in outside experts to help us to create those courses, there are fees. But they are in a similar vein to our donation programs with our products where the fee for those uh, you know, where retail you may pay $400 for that course, it may only cost $40 through TechSoup. So we are trying to keep that in mind. But as we have costs that uh, have come up with having to contract with SMEs, subject matter experts outside of TechSoup uh, to help create those, some of them have these. So for example, tech planning, the 101 level is totally free. 
the three other 200 level courses have a fee or you can purchase the whole package for a flat rate. Um, but we also have tech training that's free, how to learn how to train your staff on technology. And so it's geared toward helping adult learners learn about technology, which is often a big hurdle. Um, and then you know, we've got these tech tech planning courses. Um, we will be adding more courses on everything from you know, Adobe Photoshop, so specific software, to you know, the basics of design and, and graphic design, web design. Uh, we'll be having courses on security and fundraising, all kinds of things. So I'm going to just skip off of this page, but you can find the full course catalog at techsoup.course.tc slash catalog, which I know that Susan chatted out. Um, so I would recommend checking that out and just keeping an eye on it. Once you've created an account, which you have to create a new account on that platform, but once you've done that, you can log in anytime to that catalog and see what's available for you to access for free. And the resources in there include everything from short videos, little quizzes to test whether you've learned what, what's being uh, shown, uh, activities, worksheets, all kinds of great resources to help you really acquire and learn these uh, different skills. In addition, I uh, mentioned we have a lot of different newsletters that have resources. Some of you I'm sure are already subscribed to many of them. But you know, we have newsletters like By the Cup, which is our weekly uh, newsletter that includes lots of articles and how-tos and resources in addition to some of the products that are highlighted. We have the new product alert that's sent out uh, usually twice a month, and that is specifically to highlight what is new in our product catalog. So if you're looking to see what the new donations are, or if you know that, hey, every year there's a new version of QuickBooks and I want to know when it comes out, that's the newsletter that's going to tell you when it's available through TechSoup, which just to wrap that loop, uh, QuickBooks 2017 is now available. <laughs> um, and then we have uh, some specific newsletters like we have a newsletter for libraries specifically. So if you are joining us from a library, the TechSoup for Libraries newsletter will have library specific content, library specific webinars, products that we know that libraries can access and are more likely to use based on the needs that they've expressed to us. Um, we also have a newsletter for NetSquared. And if you're not familiar with NetSquared, this is a great way to access local experts on technology in your area. Uh, NetSquared.org has meetups in cities all around the world. And if there's not one local to you, and you would like to have one local to you, you can create one and solicit for experts in your area to help plan and host those events. And they usually take the form of happy hours or meetups where part of the time is talking about a specific topic. So it may be um, using social media one month. And then the rest of the time is just networking and mingling. And it's a great way to meet people to help you rebuild your website, help you maintain your computers, help you adopt the latest uh, fundraising techniques. So NetSquared is a project of TechSoup. And like I said, they're all over the world um, with I think 25 or so happening in the U.S. all the time. And we do promote those, um, those upcoming events in a big blog post at the start of every month. And you can find that on that Webinars and Events page. On the second tab we highlight those. So it's another great resource to try and connect with local expertise. I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up and get started with questions that have been asked. But if you have other questions about TechSoup, whether it's about the things we talked about today, or other questions about our donation programs, how we work, admin fees, eligibility, Anything that comes to mind, feel free to use this next uh, 10 minutes as your opportunity to get questions answered because that's what we're here for today. Um, I'm going to just point to some additional resources here before we get started with questions. But I have some links in the slides. Again, you'll receive these within the next few days. Programs affected by the fiscal year end. And I recommend looking at the list of those that aren't affected and seeing what the restrictions are to see if you can maximize the number of donations that you're receiving. And then uh, links to things like your donation request history where you can find out about when you last requested Microsoft. So you can access those free upgrades. Um, so those are just a handful of links there. But feel free to ask your questions in the chat window. I see that there are a couple in here now. And I know that, that Cameron answered one of these on the back end already. But I'm going to address it now anyway. Um, she asked a question, Charlene asked a question about Microsoft not um, 
donating to back end or back office computers for library staff. And there are reasons for that, and we are always trying to needle our way into expanding that. But a big part of it is that many libraries are connected with their local government or municipality. And so Microsoft uh, has a different channel for those staff computers to get, um, get their software through government programs that they have. Same like if you are joining us from like a K-12 school. Microsoft has an education program. So it doesn't actually come through TechSoup and the nonprofit program, um, donation program with us to access those pieces of software. Now if you have a computer lab that's public facing, or you have a station of computers or a handful of computers that your uh, patrons or customers, depending on the type of organization you are, use, those public facing computers can access and can get the donated tech, uh, Microsoft donations through TechSoup. So I hope that that helps answer that question. But it is in large part because of the makeup of many public libraries being part of their local government that Microsoft prefers that those libraries go through the government process. So I hope that makes sense. Um, let's see, we had a couple of other questions around um, organization size. And so I know uh, Cameron, you mentioned the ideal size for a program like IT Assist is if you have 8 or 10 staff people or larger. If you're smaller than that, IT Assist may not be the right fit, but certainly you can check it out. Anyway, is it the same for other programs like what we talked, to, talked about today? So for example, Boost, is that really something that would be valuable for any size organization or just certain sizes? What do you think? Sure. So, um, so this is Catherine. Oh, sorry. This is Catherine again, and I can speak to, to Boost. Um, I think it's definitely something that's valuable for, for any size organization. The, um, the voucher and also the additional discounts on hardware and software I think are things that, that anyone can use. Uh, I have heard from, from staff at smaller organizations that Boost can be really helpful if you're an accidental techie or if sometimes you struggle making decisions around technology. Um, it can be helpful to be a Boost subscriber because it gives you that flexibility to, to maybe try different things that, that you wouldn't have otherwise tried. Um, you know, if you're not sure if, if Tableau is right for you, if you're a Boost subscriber, you can try it really with no risk. And, um, and also the, the trainings and consultations that, that Becky pointed out are, are also really good services for small organizations, especially if you're, you're not sure if Office 365 is right for you. Um, those consultations can be really valuable if you're, you're not exactly sure what your next steps are in your tech planning. But I would say that definitely all size organizations can take advantage of some of those special offers as well. Thanks, Catherine. That's great. And, and I would agree with that uh, sentiment that this could be good for any kind of organization. And really $79 uh, if you're under $2 million budget, plus you get that $25 credit toward other donations that you might request. Um, I pay less than that for my gym membership every month <laughs> that I don't actually go to. So <laughs> that's yeah, it's like a really great a year. deal. <laughs> If you if you use the twenty five dollar voucher and you get one or two of the the no fee or the discounted products, um, the savings add up really quickly. Absolutely. Well, thanks for that. We have um, a couple of other quick questions before we wrap up. Uh, Linda asks, "What is the cost of TechSoup?" And I will happily say it is entirely free to sign up. Uh, there is no cost to being a TechSoup member or user. You can use our forums. You can join those NetSquared events. You can do all of that for free. You can use our articles, come to the webinars, no cost at all. Um, the costs associated with TechSoup are the admin fees uh, for different product donations. So just to explain how that works really quickly, uh, the different donor partners, some of them donate completely their products. Some of them discount substantially. And as part of helping TechSoup provide these services, we charge a small admin fee. And so again, where I gave the example earlier where the retail cost of something might be $400 if you were to walk into Best Buy for it, TechSoup may offer it for $40 admin fee. So that's where the cost will come in, and that's 
specific to each different donation you would, requ would request. So sometimes that cost might be $6 depending upon what it is. Sometimes that cost, if it's a discounted product where you are only getting part of it donated, it might be $150. really depends on uh, the specific products. Uh, and some of those are products. Some of those are subscription services like an annual subscription to a grant searching website. Some of them may be um, consultations where it might be a one-time $15 fee for a 90-minute phone conference consultation with a tech expert to help you determine whether Salesforce is a good fit for you. So it really depends. But signing up and joining TechSoup is totally free. And so I recommend highly doing that. And I, I say that not just as a staff person, but as somebody who again benefited an awful lot from using TechSoup for many years <laughs> before joining the team here. Um, Beverly has asked uh, that she'd like to open a new branch library and housing authority in a city, can TechSoup be a good start with that? Um, absolutely. We can help with hardware setup costs. Uh, we can help with uh, wireless hotspots. We can help with some of the software depending upon what programs uh, you need to have on those different machines, depending upon whether they are public facing computers. So if, if in the housing authority for example, you are actually serving people with housing needs that come in and are searching for housing in a public uh, computer lab type setting, we could help set up all kinds of stuff. And we wouldn't actually be doing the setup, but you can get and access a lot of the technologies that you would need for that through our donation program. So I would definitely recommend checking out uh, our services. And take that eligibility quiz that I pointed to at the beginning. Because if you put in you know, your approximate annual budget, your organization type, and subtype, which those are determined by the IRS. Those are not categories that we just willy-nilly came up with. Um, but if you, if you fit into multiple categories, test it out because you may legitimately fall into more than one of those different categories. And you may find that one of them makes you more eligible than the other for different donation programs. And as long as you legitimately really do fit into that category with your work, then you can access lots of different donation programs. So we are just about at time, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. But I'd love to hear one thing that you've learned in today's webinar <clears throat> excuse me, that you are going to take back and either try to implement or investigate further. Or maybe you've learned about a program that you really are excited to go and access. If you could chat in one thing that you have gotten out of today's webinar, we appreciate that just as immediate feedback on what, what we've helped you learn, what we hope that you've acquired today. We'd also ask that you share this information with your friends and colleagues who may also benefit from it, and that you would complete that post-event survey that pops up when you exit out. We have a variety of upcoming webinars that I'd love to invite you to join us for, including one next Tuesday on Search Engine Optimization for Beginners, uh, Simple Steps for Nonprofits and Libraries. We also will have a webinar on Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, Tools and Filters for Nonprofits on the 8th. And then Libraries Supporting Social Goods, so how libraries and nonprofits can work together. So feel free to join us for any of those and watch for more to come. And also check out that uh, new, all the new courses that are becoming available through our course curriculum. We'd love you to join us there and participate in those courses. Thank you to Cameron and Catherine for your contributions to today's webinar. Thank you to our participants and to Susan for helping on the back end. And lastly, thank you to ReadyTalk, our webinar sponsor, for providing the use of today's platform. We would love it if you would take that post-event survey to give us your feedback so we can continue to improve our webinar programs. Thank you so much everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.